by to check out my video. My name's Eric and on this episode of Smoking I'm going to show you how to make smoked sous vide carnitas. Now for those of you unfamiliar, carnitas is a Mexican pork dish that is absolutely delicious. It's very popular here where I live in Southern California. It uses a very inexpensive piece of meat, the pork shoulder or pork butt uh, sometimes referred to, and you mix it with some spices, you get it nice and crispy, it's absolutely delicious. We're going to be making tacos and burritos with these later on tonight. Now I've already made a couple videos with carnitas. Uh, before I got into sous vide cooking and before I got into smoking, I used to just make it in a slow cooker or crock pot. I'll leave a link below. I also just did this in the sous vide machine, which also came out delicious. But in this uh, episode, I'm going to try to combine a couple of my two favorite uh, methods. Smoking with the sous vide, okay? Now, I love carnitas. It's got some very authentic Mexican spices, but of course, adding a little smoke flavor is certainly going to make it even more delicious. So that's what I'm trying to do here. Real basic ingredients. I got two seven pound uh, pork shoulder here. We got salt, garlic powder, some oregano, cumin, coriander, some orange juice. We got some oranges, some limes, and onions. That's pretty much all the ingredients you need. I'm going to show you how to do this step by step, so stick around, let's get cooking. So the first thing you want to do is get the pork out of the package, rinse it off in the sink under cold water, uh, dry it off with some paper towels, just put it on a rack like this. I'm just going to move this aside here. Now I'm going to show you how to make this absolutely delicious pork carnitas rub that we're going to use on this. I'm going to sprinkle it on, let it sit for a few hours to soak into the meat, and then I'm also going to use a little bit when I put it into the sous vide bag. So you might have to make more or less of the rub depending on how much pork you're making. I've kind of upped it up a little bit because I'm making two seven pound pork butts, but I'll leave all the specific descriptions down below. So first off, I got two tablespoons of regular old salt. We got two tablespoons of garlic powder. Two tablespoons of ground cumin. That's what gives it the really authentic uh, Mexican spice that I really love. One tablespoon of ground oregano. And last but not least, one tablespoon of ground coriander. Now put it in a little uh, container of some sort because we want to shake it up really good. Make sure it's all equal. Make sure it sticks. Normally, you know, if you do a barbecue uh, pork uh, shoulder, you put mustard on it. I'm not going to put mustard on it. I'm afraid it might take away from the carnitas. So I'm going to be simmering this in the sous vide bag with a little bit of orange and limes and a little bit of orange juice. So I just put some orange juice in a spray bottle here and I'm going to just spray some orange juice on here as a binder. Okay, and then we're just going to shake this on. We're going to put a nice coating on. You know how this is. You guys have done this before. It's not too complicated. So let me get these all coated up. We'll be back in a second. I'll show you how it looks like when it's all done. All right, welcome back. I've uh, wrapped them both up in some plastic wrap, nice and tight. I'm just gonna sit these in the refrigerator for at least a couple hours. It's uh, early morning now, so I'm gonna smoke this on my pit barrel cooker. Now you can smoke this in whatever smoker you got. You can smoke it in a, you know, a kettle grill, if you got a cabinet style smoker, electric smoker, whatever kind of smoker you got, even a gas grill with a little bit of wood chips and some aluminum foil, that'll work as well. But uh, smoke it however you'd like. I'm doing it on a pit barrel cooker because I like the taste of charcoal, adds a little bit more of a smoky flavor, and I, I like the idea of hanging these by hooks and let them hang there. It kind of gives a convention style heat inside that uh, barrel. 
So anyway, yeah, if you can do it overnight, that's even better. I'm going to be cooking these in a few hours, so I'm just going to put them in there two, three hours, and that's all you really all right, need. These have been sitting in the fridge for around four, four and a half hours. I put some hooks on them here, so you can see I'm going to hang them uh, from the pit barrel cooker, from the rebarbs in there. <clears throat> so what I typically like to do is just sprinkle a little bit more of this rub. Alas, uh, little coating, mild coating, make sure we get a nice bark. I just lit up the chimney starter. I'll meet you guys outside when I'm done uh, seasoning these on both sides real quickly. And we'll throw these in the pit barrel cooker. All right, here we are at the pit barrel cooker. My coals are done. Get some in the basket here to get these other ones lit. Spread them out evenly. Alright, we're going to put our rods in. We're just going to let this warm up just, you know, maybe 10 minutes. Let that temperature stabilize. Put the lid on it now. Alright, I got them hanging here. The coals have been going for around 15 minutes. I got one chunk of uh, apple wood, one chunk of uh, hickory. I'm just going to throw on here. Get a nice little smoke before I close the lid. Get, some, get one over here on this side. Perfect. And there you go. I'm not even going to put a temperature gauge in. I don't really need to. I'm going to be sous vide cooking this. So the only purpose here is to get a nice crust. So keep that lid on. We are set. <clears throat> Alright, it's been two hours. Let's take a look here. Oh, they're looking good. Add a little bit of orange juice here. Oh, they're looking nice. I like the color. Let me do a quick temperature check. Let's see where we're at. Mm -hmm. 115. So you know what? We'll just let this these uh, stay on, get a little bit darker. But I like what I see so far. Ooh. Looking good. All right, we're at the three-hour mark. I think it's just about ready to whew, take off. It's getting really dark out here. Wow, a lot of smoke. One of those wood chunks must have caught on fire. Oh, look at that beautiful bark. I hope you guys can see. It's kind of dark out here. That's pretty much all I'm looking for. Let me just get a quick idea what we're looking at temperature-wise. Well, not quite where you normally would take it off and wrap it if you were cooking it the traditional way, because uh, you know that's usually around 160, 165. That's 148. Let's see this one. But the color is really nice, so I, I'm not really concerned. I'm going to be cooking this 165 on the sous vide for. 12 to 24 hours. So you know what? It's done. 141. I'm going to take these out. I'm going to let them rest for around a half hour just to get their temperature down to where I can handle them safely and get them inside some uh, food saver bags. All right, here we are. They've been sitting out for around 25 minutes. Man, look at that bark. It smells wonderful. I'm just going to let these cool off. I'm going to put them in some food saver bags. We're going to be adding some uh, fruits here. Got some onions, some oranges, and some limes. I'm also going to be putting some a little bit of orange juice in these bags. Oh, and a little bit more of that special seasoning. We'll be back in a second when I get these all bagged up. All right, so here you go. I got it into a food saver bag. This is just one of them. I just want to kind of show you what you do here. If uh, you can't fit it in whatever bag you're using, feel free to cut it into smaller sections. I just like putting in there all the way. And I got a little bit left of that barbecue rub. So I'm going to sprinkle just a little bit of that on there. Not too much, but I want to use it with that gravy to re-moisture the pork when I'm done. So I'm definitely going to sprinkle some in there. There you go. Then I'm going to put some uh, onions that I sliced up. Just kind of put them in the bag here. 
try to maybe push them down in the corner of the bag where there's some air pockets. There we go. We're going to put some lime slices as well. And some orange slices. I'm going to squeeze a, a section in for a little bit of orange. And also, I got some orange juice here. We're just going to add a little bit to the bag. Not much, maybe, oh, I don't know, a quarter cup. Just a little bit, add a little liquid. There you go. Just a little, a generous, uh, generous shot there. And that's it. Put some uh, on the other side and we're going to seal these up. I'll be back in a second when we throw them in. All right, here we are. I just put them in. You can see they're sealed up with the oranges, the limes, the onions, a little bit of that seasoning. Ooh, 165. I set it for 165 for 12 or 24 hours. You can go with a minimum of 12 all the way up to 24. We're going to eat these tomorrow for dinner. So even though I got a late start, I can pull them off before 24. As long as they go 12, we'll be set. So there we are. I'm going to probably watch this. This one looks like it's on the verge of float. I might have to put something down to weigh it down. And I'm going to put some foil over this big container. Because it's a big container. And I don't want all this water to evaporate when I'm sleeping. So... There you go, 165, 24 hours. We'll see you guys tomorrow. All right, guys, here we are, beer review time. It's a hot day. Stone Brewery Company, Scorpion Bowl IPA. A punch to the stinger. 7.5% alcohol. So that's my beverage. And my son, Kyle, say hi, Kyle. Hi. He's going to be doing a beer review, too. But he's going to be reviewing... IBC root beer since 1919 made with cane sugar so here we go it's the 4th of July happy 4th of July everyone it kind of looks like a smaller bottle in my opinion well it is a smaller bottle a big bottle for dad and a smaller bottle for son wow <laughs> well I hear some fireworks in the distance we're gonna have our own fireworks we got a little sampler supply we'll be doing tonight when it gets dark as well as so excited. look at that see enough for one frosty mug as well as uh, having some of the sous vide carnitas it looks absolutely delicious man can hardly wait we got uh, eight hours left on the timer it was set at 24 hours last night so it's pretty much done but I'm making uh, I got some chicken drumsticks that are marinating in a brine in the refrigerator so I'm just gonna let this go until we're ready to eat and I poured that way too fast because look at that big head on it oh well I wasn't paying attention all right Kyle cheers to the 4th of July Cheers. thanks again for watching my video guys I really appreciate it chug right. chug chug <laughs> give it a sip go. tell us what you think it's really good that's it, it's really good. Anything about the flavors or is it too sweet, not sweet really enough? Tasty. Yeah, I can tell it has a little caramel in it. Okay, this right here smells fruity, but when I taste it, I just taste the fruit slightly. Definitely tell it's an IPA. It's really hoppy. It's got a very strong hop flavor. But you know, it's pretty well balanced. It's not bad at all. What do you think? Don't drink the whole thing. It's really good. <laughs> it's really good. Okay, that's how you know he likes it. <laughs> if, if it's halfway gone in the video, <laughs> in the video review. Anyway, this is pretty good. It's uh, it's definitely stronger than your average IPA. It's got a little bit of a hoppy uh, bang, but it's uh, very well balanced. A little mild fruit flavor. It's definitely good. Cheers again, Kyles. Happy 4th of July. Or as they say in Europe, skull. One more time. Skull. <laughs> Thanks again for watching, guys. I'm going to enjoy this beer. 
Kyle's gonna enjoy his root beer. How you know how you know my dad says cheers a lot is when it's drunk in three quarters down. When it what? Says, I says I said the way you can tell my dad says cheers way too much is when it's three quarters down due to you saying cheers. Oh, you mean three quarters down my beer? Well, that's just because I poured it and had a big head on it. No, mine. Oh, yours. <laughs> yeah. Again, guys, thanks a lot. We'll see you in a little bit when we're getting ready to pull this out, shred it up, and see what's uh, see what's there and do a taste test. You looking forward to that? Yep. All right. We'll see you in a little bit, guys. Cheers. All right. 18 and a half hours. I just pulled these out. They're still sealed in the bag. They are hot. I'm just going to let them cool down a little bit so I can handle them a little better when I open these up. And we'll get this uh, shredded. See what we're dealing with. Be back in a second. Alright guys, here you are. I pulled the both bones out. They came out clean. You want to definitely save the juice. You can use it to uh, moisten up the the pork after you're done shredding it or if you're going to store it in a freezer uh, yeah put a little juice in it it makes it nice uh, liquid to have to warm it up so uh, time for me to use the claws my wife got me for Christmas a couple uh, years ago let's just go into this oh look at the smoke ring on this incredible oh Look at this. Man, you can hear all the fireworks. It's 4th of July. It's going off out in the neighborhood. Let me continue to shred this. I'll try to take out the big chunks of fat. And we'll all be back for a taste test in just a minute. All right, here we are, the whole family. My mom, far more. My wife, Monica, my son, Kyle. Say hi. Hi. And here we are. We're going to try it. I shredded it up. Please excuse the background noise. 4th uh, of July. It sounds like uh, World War III. Here you go. Thank you. Just grab a fork here and take a little piece out here. Nice smoke ring on certain pieces and it's so juicy cooking it the sous vide way. Good. Oh wow. Mm. That is delicious. Definitely taste mm. smoke. Oh that is so good. But I also taste that uh, Arnita seasoning. Can you? It is really But it's soft. not overpowering right. with the carnita seasoning. Mm -hmm. I got a little extra you could sprinkle on top with you. What I would do is crisp it up. This is right after I shredded it. Normally I put it in a pan, broil for 450 just to crisp it up. And you could sprinkle a little bit more of the seasoning on it just to give it a little bit more authentic flavor. What do you think? Delicious. It's really good. Yeah? And the seasonings are not, right now, overpowering. Oh. So mm -hmm. I think it could actually be used in, like, uh, barbecue pulled pork sandwiches or carnitas like tacos it's perfectly seasoned right now like you yeah, said you could add more to it but this is great yeah I really enjoy it well guys as always thanks for watching if you like my video hit like if you like my channel please subscribe check out the link above to my website ericsmokingbarbecue.com and we'll see you next time say goodbye bye bye thanks for watching guys happy 4th of July happy 4th of July happy 4th of July bye <laughs> bye <laughs>